And the big news before this race was Van Vluten, who crashed because she dropped her chain, broke her elbow or something. And so the question was whether she was going to ride the race. But there were some other issues with her, Benji. She started in a Tom Trollskin suit. And if you don't know, the Tom Trollskin suit of the Netherlands is mostly orange, while the road race suit like the jerseys that they normally wear on the road now since the european championships are more white than a tiny bit of like orange textures all around and the uci jury members in that race weren't really fond of that because they're she's basically wearing a different jersey than the other teammates of the netherlands which is kind of not okay and i understand where they're coming from in that so they were not happy with that they summoned her and she had to take on a different jersey so she basically wrote this race with a skin suit with a jersey on top of it on the 27th of october the tour de france femme of x swift route reveal for 2023 put that one in your diary we will be reacting to that and as a reminder Zwift was one of the main reasons the Tour de France farm was able to get off the ground their support led to the first great edition won by Annemiek van Flurten and I'm looking forward to seeing what the route reveal will have in store at the end of October once the UCI calendar for this year is done. To be clear so everybody understands group that included the Troupe Ludwig and so forth that group was the first one on the road the second one included the Langs of van Flurten Kopecky and also Arleni Sierra, fast rider in there as well, bit of a factor in that group as well. And Nee Fisher Black, who was then the bigger candidate for the U23 title in this race in that group as well. And then the next group was Voss, who had Van Dijk coming back to her and actually started pacing Voss as well. But that was too far to actually still matter in the race, although I was low-key hoping that we'd have like everything come back in the final kilometer. And it somewhat happened, didn't it? Because... That first group started collaborating so limitedly that we saw that second group of Kopecky and so forth, most of which seemed to be the work of Kopecky, Sierra, and I also feel like Roiser did quite a bit going into the final last kilometer to get that group back. Shabby was also in that second group. Persico was in that second group. So Longoborghini in this first group, Persico in the second group. That's why Longoborghini isn't pacing as much in the front group, although I feel like she paced quite a bit still. How did it come together and what happened afterwards? Well, yeah, I was waiting for, well, first of all, at least along a Borghini, I was waiting for the counterattack with Persico behind. Now, remember, they don't have radios, so this is like everyone reacting to what's happening in the road. She doesn't know Persico is necessarily in that group behind her. Yeah. Um, I was waiting for the at least along a Borghini attack, and then the group comes back together and ELB doesn't get on the front. Moorman's just been pulling. She's like, well, my medal's gone. Um, and just sort of, it's really just basically at the front, soft pulling, doing nothing. Maybe I, I thought, is she doing a, is she leading out for a trade teammate, Kopecky, um, on SD Works? Probably not because she's off to um, that Age Le, insurance. Lefebvre team next year. Um, and so Italy, first of all, Italy stuff it. Now, this is the end of a multi-hour race and world champs and this is the last 800 metres. But ELB should have got on the front and started pulling or giving a lead out to Persico. Second, Kopecky is a little bit unaware because from behind, Undertaker meme with the um, supposedly broken elbow that she was able to celebrate with afterwards, flexing. Uh, Van Vluten goes from the back in the big ring and just Cancellara destroys everybody. Um, and the minute you saw the, the overhead shot had it and you saw the separation, you saw Kopecky looked around, didn't react, done. This is in the last 750 metres. So out of nowhere, having been working for Voss, having been dropped on every Mount Pleasant, she wins the World Champs in a completely different way. Harrogate was 100k solo. Liège or races like that, she just overpowers riders on the final or hardest hill. Today, she was not necessarily the strongest, but had the best timing. A very unlikely World Championships after crashing very hard in the mixed relay TT. Kopecky second, just behind her. Persco takes third. Lippert unlucky not to get a medal. She was fourth. Big win for AVV, Benji. And um, it, when the Netherlands actually didn't have anything going their way really before the race, unlike the Olympics last year. Yeah, definitely. And we also need to keep in mind every attack that happened 
be, because of the punctures on the second last and last Mount Pleasant, not a single Dutch rider made that split. Not a single Dutch rider was good enough when it comes to their punching on today's stage. Obviously, Van Vleuten had her energy injury and so forth, so that's a big factor here. But not a single rider made that split. And they really made the best of trying to come back every single time after each Mount Pleasant using the Valley to their advantage. And when Van Vleuten was in the second group, after the last Mount Pleasant, there was another option they could have gone for. Let's say they say, I'm going to pull Van Vleuten back to the group of Vos and Van Dijk, who's also like 5 to 10 seconds behind that group. And we have a three-man three woman train, and perhaps that group also comes back. So... They had two options to go for. They had Van Vleuten sit up in that second group. In hindsight, a very good option to do so. And that group was brought back by the work of others. And Van Vleuten benefited from that with a perfect timing attack. As simple as that. We know that Lippard in this race is arguably the best puncher on the road. Strongest rider in the race, in my personal opinion. We know Van Vleuten is a rider that is the strongest climber in the world. They're going to be both at Movistar next year. I think Van Vleuten is retiring at the end of next year, if my memory serves me right. Although I hope in the same way that I hope that for Valverde every year or Nibali as well, that she extends that and actually continues riding afterwards because she's clearly good enough to keep on riding quite a few years still. How do you see that combination work? Do you believe that that's a good combination? Do you believe that that will benefit each other in the same races or do you believe that they should ride separate? calendars they don't really fit that well together because Lippert's not an all-out great flat sprinter she's decent in a flat sprint but not like a Kopecky whereas Kopecky and Van Vleuten's are actually a better pairing that sort of rider um I don't know uh they got Sarah Gigante they got Lippert Lippert's only 24 so I guess she she's available she maybe hasn't maxed out her potential and Movistar, no Van Vleuten's at the tail end of her career, as, although, as you said, of course, she could continue for many years. But they're like, let's just get Lippert in now and maybe she'll learn something from Van Vleuten. And then there's plenty, there's so many races on the women's calendar now that there is enough racing to go around. I mean, Van Vleuten, she has done now, with all that racing, she has won Omloop, second Flanders, second Flesh, first Liège, first Giro Donna with a couple of stages, first Tour de France with a couple of stages, first of Vuelta with a stage, and now wins the World Championships. And I, I haven't gone through her many seasons, but I, I can't imagine her having. I don't think it's not possible to have had a better season. So, just crazy. Completely washed. <laughs> yeah, how old is she? She's 39. She's turning 40 in a couple of weeks. Yeah, like she can clearly keep riding for a long time. She does crash a lot. I'd say her biggest weakness is um, she crashes a lot. Uh, I'd say slightly above average. So the toll that would take on her body, I don't know. But like it's not good crashing. But at the moment, she looks fine. And she just won world champs with after a very, very heavy crash. So yeah. She'll continue. Who will pop up? Vollering this year didn't quite step up to that Van der Breken level. Um, Blanca Vash, those sort of talents. We are waiting we, for someone to really step up and challenge her. And maybe Cavalli would have been her, but she had that unfortunate crash in the Tour de France family. 